Hello, yes, uh, my name is Liam Stotts. I'm the International Recruitment Manager for Nepal at the University of Bedfordshire and I work here in the International Office at the Luton campus. One thing I'm curious to know is about the delays in offers, you know, mm. the majority of the students, they ask us, I mean, I've applied for a couple of weeks, we haven't got offers yet. Mm. So why, why that, is that quite, is happening? Uh, quite normal. Uh, How much GPA in terms of GPA or percentage uh, or number of uh, years gaps will be accepted for sure. Nepalese students? But for sure, would you mind just sharing? I mean, I've done a little bit of research. I've recruited a um, number of students here. So would you mind just sharing what Bedfordshire University is like for our students who are probably sure. watching us for the first time. The other thing which I would like to ask you now is about the entry requirements generally. I mean, um, the language requirement, uh, whether that's PT, IELTS, sure. um, or other forms of English test. Yes. Yeah, so, so yeah, I would really encourage you to research, you know, look at the university, look at our programs, speak to Uniladder, and if you want to commit to Bedfordshire, then please make an application. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and your counselor again is back again with another video. Today we have a special guest from University of Bedfordshire. It's our pleasure, Unilater, um, as a pleasure to welcome Liam in our YouTube channel. Uh, Liam, would you mind introducing yourself? Sure. And today we will talk about University of Bedfordshire's entry requirement, scholarship, number of courses available for Nepalese students. Hello, yes, uh, my name is Liam Stotts. I'm the International Recruitment Manager for Nepal at the University of Bedfordshire and I work here in the International Office at the Luton campus. I'd like to thank you and thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here um, in campus. I'm here today at Luton campus of Bedfordshire University. In general, let's talk about the entry requirements for Nepalese sure. students. Yeah, yeah. H how much GPA in terms of GPA or percentage uh, or number of uh, years gaps will be accepted for sure. Nepalese students? Okay, well, let's first of all talk about the undergraduate students from Nepal who would apply to the University of Bedfordshire. Mm -hmm. The first thing we we'll look at is their um, high school qualifications. So uh, typically from across South Asia and also applies to Nepal, if they've got at least 55% on the high school um, or their, their senior um, high school certificates, um, it could be called intermediary or um, you know um, higher secondary, 55% uh, is what we tend to look for on their transcripts for direct entry um, onto year one. Now we are going to have a new foundation um, year approved shortly. Mm -hmm. uh, further details will be announced soon about the foundation. But for year one, typically it's 55% on the higher secondary um, certificates. Um, and that is for majority of courses at undergraduate level. There might be one or two differences with applying for nursing or for social work or for teaching programmes. But generally mm -hmm. speaking, across the board, it's 55%. The gap in studies, no more than five years. So if you're listening to this um, and you've got your, high, your higher secondary back in 2014, um, but you have had some quality work experience over those last eight or nine years, uh, please talk to uh, the Union Ladder. You'll be able to talk to me about the application procedure that would follow next with your CV. But typically it's a five year gap. Um, if you're looking to do a postgraduate course at the University of Bedfordshire, then it's the same again at 55%, but it must be a four year degree from Nepal, unless you've studied a UK degree in Nepal, which is usually three years full time. So if it's from a Nepalese university, you know, a, a Nepalese bachelor's degree, it must be a four year degree with a transcript showing at least 55% um, that you've passed on that course, okay? And the gap in studies for master's students is typically around seven years. So up to seven years, you'll be fine. If it's more than seven years, and then please speak to Uniladder and they'll be able to speak to me about the application process for you with a good CV if it's more than seven years. Okay, um, so generally what we get asked is how do we justify or verify gaps? What we would like to say, or I don't know how Liam will say, um, gaps must be verified. You should have a solid uh, gap uh, within those period. You cannot just simply say that you've completed your degree in 2016 and you've been doing nothing. 
right? Exactly. So um, that's yes. something which will not be accepted by the <laughs> no. university as long as you provide a valid, justifiable work experience or professional engagement, um, you're likely to be accepted. Otherwise, even if you have a gap of two years doing nothing, unlike in a pandemic world, right. um, you're unlikely to be accepted. Exactly, that, that is correct. So, and, and that's why the gap is more than five years for undergraduate, more than seven years for postgraduate. It must be a good quality CV that we'll be assessing. So you must show that you've got very strong and relevant work experience, which shows no gaps on that CV. You know, like Ganesh was saying, you know, if you've, if you've got your uh, bachelor's in 2012 mm -hmm. and you've worked from 2013 until 2018, but for the last four and a half years, you've done nothing, um, that won't go very well. Okay, so you must have a very good quality work experience with a strong CV showing no gaps in work experience in the last eight or nine years, for example. Okay, so it must be a very good um, and a relevant um, CV. Definitely. Um, if, we, if you have completed your degree back in 2016-17, have a gap of a couple of years or five years, up to seven years maximum, and um, you can justify with the relevant work experience or professional engagement, please do not hesitate to get in touch with, with us or team in Kathmandu Hathi Sar will be more than happy to assist you further in terms of documentation. The other thing which I would like to ask you now is about the entry requirements. So generally, I mean, um, the language requirement, uh, whether that's PT, IELTS, sure. um, or other forms of English test. Yeah, so, so at the University of Bedfordshire, uh, we do have a range of English tests that can be accepted for Nepalese students. The first one being the most recognised test in the world, that's the academic IELTS test. So generally speaking, for both undergraduate and postgraduate students, IELTS of a 6 overall with no band less than 5.5 on the academic IELTS test. Um, that's for general entry onto majority of our courses. And there are a few exceptions to that. If they've if they are applying for an LLM, so a Master of Laws degree with the University of Bedfordshire, then we would expect them to have got an IELTS of a 6.5, no band less than a 6. Same applies for our um, MA in Applied Linguistics, a TESOL course at our Bedford campus, and obviously our undergraduate and postgraduate adult nursing courses. We even um, um, we even need an IELTS of a seven for our BSc and the MSc in social work. So those are a bit higher as well. So there are a few exceptions, but generally IELTS six with no band less than 5.5. That's for the academic IELTS. If, you, if for any reason your IELTS is lower than this, so maybe you've got a 5.5 overall mm -hmm. with a band in a 5.0, you may be eligible to study a pre-sessional course. This is a short English program which starts before your main degree course. It could be two weeks, four weeks, eight weeks. Um, if you listen to this from Nepal, maybe you don't need a pre-sessional. If you think that you do, please talk to Uniladder because we do offer on-campus pre-sessional courses right here in Luton, um, which will be on your CAS. So it'll be a combined CAS, your main degree course with pre-sessional English. And there is a, um, a short, so there is a small additional fee for the pre-sessional course, mm -hmm. um, which is in addition to the main degree course fees as well. So that's the IELTS requirements. Generally speaking, that's what we do accept. We also, so, um, can, sorry, yes, sorry I, yes. I would like to interrupt you yes, before you hate to PT requirements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, you were mentioning about the pre-sessional English. Mm. Will that be just the academic pre-sessional, um, academic IELTS? Or oh yes, that does be, it need to be good with question. UKVI? Yes, yeah, so it has to be UKVI. Um, the, as, that's the only test we can accept for a pre-sessional course, if you need it, obviously. Um, general academic IELTS, six overall, no one less than 5.5 is absolutely fine All right, uh, so for general entry. So here you mean um, those who are short of 0.5 or one band exactly. in any of those components, um, listening, writing, right? Right, exactly. Or overall, yes. um, they must have UKVI IELTS yes, to, to do be a here in campus. Yeah, to do, it, to, do, to do any of our pre-sessional courses, you must be here on campus and it must be the UKVI IELTS only. 
So if you haven't done the UKVI test and you've got you know, a point less on one of the bands, mm -hmm. you will need to redo the test and do the UKVI version. I mean, my best advice is, uh, is that if you, this is before you even book your IELTS, if you haven't booked it yet, if you think your English profi proficiency isn't that great in a couple of areas, then mm -hmm. make sure that you book the UKVI test. Because therefore, if you want to do a pre-sessional course with us, you'll be entitled to do one and therefore you haven't got to pay for another test. You can do the UKVI and that's your first test that you can do. Um, but yes, yeah, so if you've done it already and you need a pre-sessional course, it's not UKVI, you must do the test again. It must be the UKVI test. That's the only test we can accept for a pre-sessional course. All right. So um, um, yeah. in general, so if you haven't done um, the UKVI, you're unlikely to be accepted for mm. um, pre-sessional leading yes. to master's or bachelor's degree uh, yep. they term it as a joint cast so um if you think that um you need a i mean if if you're short of 0.5 or 1 and um you, you believe that you you cannot score that in uh, in in your uh, aisles probably the best thing to do would be go for a ukvi um academic aisles test and um if you get a um lowish score then then also you'll be accepted by the university through a pre-sessional route. Correct, absolutely. Um, and then other tests that we do also accept is the Pearson Academic PTE test, which is also um, widely known across the world. We need at the moment 59 in each band, please. Okay. We can also accept the language cert, which is another popular test. Um, but we only accept the SELT test, the S-E-L-T test. Uh, there are two tests for the language cert. The first one is the ESOL online international test that we do not accept, which you do at home. The SELT test by language cert is the one that you do in an actual test centre, much like the IELTS test. That's the mm -hmm. one that we do accept. And it's 33 out of 50 in each band. And then the other test we can also consider um, is the TOEFL test. Um, I can't remember what we need in each band, but it is on the website and we do accept that test as well. It's the TOEFL um, home IBT test as well. There is something called Skills for English, the PSI test. That is also UKVI approved. Um, we should be able to accept that as well. Now that test is not on the website, but it is a UKVI approved test. So, if you, so if you've done the PSI Skills for English test, and you think that you might be eligible to come to the University of Bedfordshire, talk to Uniladder, and they will share the test results with the university, and we'll see if we can accept you onto a course with us. Sure. Um, thank you so much for briefing us about the interview requirements and also about the. Uh, interview requirement, I mean, uh, English language requirement as well uh, for Nepalese students. So, um, Bedfordshire, would you mind just sharing? I mean, I've done a little bit of research, I've recruited a um, number of students here. So, would you mind just sharing what Bedfordshire University is like for our students who are probably sure. watching us for the first time? Absolutely. Okay, well, uh, we are a very modern university in the UK. Uh, we started in 2006 officially as a university. We have two main campuses in the UK, Luton Campus and Bedford Campus. Uh, the Luton Campus, where we are sitting right now, right in the postgraduate centre here today, uh, we are less than 30 minutes away from central London by a fast train. So getting to the UK from Nepal is quite straightforward to London Heathrow. And then you would get the um, underground uh, train to St Pancras International and then a fast train to Luton in less than 30 minutes and that's how close you are and then to get to the campus from a train station is about 10 minutes away walk, uh, walking distance. Now the campus has got lovely vibes about it, it's got a very multicultural um, kind of identity where we have over 100 countries represented at the University of Evershire today. Uh, the total population of the university, taking into account all of our study centres across the UK and our overseas campuses, it's roughly 20,000 students. So we are very much a globally recognised university as well. 
Um, we've also got many international students who are studying with us. I would say roughly 25 to 30 percent of our whole population are all overseas students. Uh, where we attract students from across South Asia, West Africa, the Americas, Europe, and of course, our British students as well. Um, if you want to work in Luton, guess what? You can. <laughs> and there's many jobs going in the local area. Um, and of course, you can work up to 20 hours per week um, on your student visa and then full time when you are not studying, obviously. Now, just to our left, maybe you can't see it on camera, but look, we've got our lovely on-campus accommodation, which is right here on campus. Uh, it couldn't be any closer. It literally is right there. Um, lovely modern ensuite rooms. Every room has its own bathroom. Uh, you're paying around £129.50 per week to study on a postgraduate course, and then a bit more on an undergraduate course, okay? Um, but it's so convenient for you, you know, to be living here on campus here in Luton. And the same also applies in Bedford as well. Mm -hmm. So we've got on-campus accommodation at both campuses. Um, you know, and you get all the, all the benefits of 24-7 security, safety, and the convenience living on campus. And you get the best experience by living mm -hmm. on campus. If you're living away from campus, it may take a bit more time to get to campus and so on. It's far more convenient to be on campus. Uh, like I said, we are a modern university and we've got some fantastic facilities here at the university. Uh, for example, we have our 24-7 library here in Luton, which we opened back in 2016. And we've got another lovely camp, uh, library in Bedford, again, also 24 hours a day, seven days a week as well, okay? We've got our fantastic STEM building here at the university uh, for our science, our computing, our engineering courses, all based inside the lovely STEM building, undergraduate and postgraduate. It only opened in October 2019 and it cost the university 40 million pounds of investment. I mean, the library here in Luton was 46 million pounds when it opened in 2016. So we're always developing our campuses, always investing in the student experience as well. I think when it comes to Nepalese students, um, what the, the kind of subjects that are popular at the moment mm -hmm, mm -hmm. are our postgraduate degrees um, in, in business, uh, postgraduate courses in computing and engineering, our undergraduate courses in science, for example, our BSc in biomedical science, our BSc in biological sciences, and our master's degree, our MSc in public health. Incredibly popular with our Nepalese students, you know. Uh, and get this, I can also reveal to you today, we've got a brand new undergraduate course in public health, a BSc, a bachelor's degree in public health, a brand new course fully approved for all students, including students from Nepal as well. So we'd be very interested to hear if you want to apply for our brand new BSc in public health right here at the Luton campus. Um, in terms of the scholarships, mm -hmm. which I do think is a very, uh, very important question, Definitely. or an important issue for international students, how much scholarship can I get from the University of Bedfordshire? True. Well, I can now say it is up to £1,500 um, for all undergraduate and postgraduate international students. So our deposit policy for the CAS is 65% of the full fees that we, you'll see on the offer letter. Um, once you pass the interview and we've cleared your TB test and bank statements, we'll give you a CAS and we reward you the £1,000 scholarship, which is automatic mm -hmm. and they get that at registration. Um, and then if they pay the full fees upfront as their deposit, we give them an extra £500 discount as well. And that's why we do say up to £1,500 in total. And that is for the first year as well. Masters for the one year degree, well, they get that anyway. But for undergraduates, they get the £1,000 for their first year. So it's not throughout the three years? No, it's just for the first year. First year Correct. only. Correct, okay. absolutely. Yes, so, that's um, right. You're getting a scholarship of um, around £1,500. Um, 
and uh, for the master's degree, I think the fee structure is not that expensive. Uh, it is, yeah, absolutely, it's very affordable. I mean, mm -hmm. we are year on year increasing our tuition fees, right? Because everyone is doing it in the um, UK. Yeah, All yeah, universities yeah, are increasing yeah. their tuition fees. But we do have a good selection of one year and two year master's courses mm -hmm. and our tuition fees are very competitive and living here in Luton or Bedford in Bedfordshire here at the university, the cost of living is much cheaper than trying to find accommodation in central London. We sure. know London's down the road, it's not far from here, but we're in Bedfordshire, we're not in London where the cost of living is much more affordable for international students. I also just want to mention here that what's very unique about the university as well is our multiple intakes. Mm -hmm. So for undergraduate courses across the board, we have two intakes per year, September and January. Mm -hmm. But for the postgraduate courses, our block programs in business, computer engineering, we have six intakes per year, September, November, January, March, June and July. So every six to eight weeks, there's a new intake of international students. We're expecting large cohorts this June and July, and then a much bigger cohort, obviously, this coming September. And of course, September is still open. Still open. <laughs> um, so if, if anyone of you watching this video and if you're planning to apply for UK, and if you see the course that perfectly suits you, at the University of Bedfordshire, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us. Um, we're based in, as I said, we're based in Kathmandu and in London. We'll be, we work exclusively for the UK universities and uh, we will be able to assist you uh, further. So um, that was a little bit of um, information about um, University of Bedfordshire and why Nepalese students, the, the, the popular courses, we also talked about the scholarships, you know. Currently, I believe there, there are dozens of students currently studying at uh, yes. Bedfordshire University. Uh, you mentioned that public courses, computer science, public health. But one course in particular I would like to emphasize is BSc Nursing, which is accredited Indeed. by Nursing Medical Council. Correct. Uh, yes. Would you mind just telling us a little bit more about it? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So I think what's also what's becoming a very popular program for Nepalese students is, is the nursing programs. Absolutely. So at the University of Bedfordshire here in the Luton campus, we have our BSc and the MSc in adult nursing. So adult nursing is the course that they can actually apply for. We do have child and mental health nursing, but the only course available to international students is the is the adult nursing course. Mm -hmm. So for the BSc Honours Adult Nursing, the intake is every September. Um, students apply through UCAS. Um, UCAS is the University and Colleges Admission Service. Um, and the reason why students have to apply the UCAS for the BSc is because the faculty actually um, go through the applications and they select the best ones for the interview which takes place before the offer is issued to the student on their UCAS profile. Okay, so that's very important. The entry requirements are slightly different as well. Um, so typically we do accept 55%, um, but I would expect students to have got more than that, maybe 60, 65%. A really strong personal statement and an intent for studying the course. And of course, the IELTS of a 6.5, no band lesson of 6 is the only test we can accept for the BSc Honours in Adult Nursing. Um, applications are still open as far as I'm aware, but you must apply via UCAS. Once you've applied, you can provide the application details to Uniladder. You'll be able to contact the university for extra support. That's a BSc. Then the MSc is our two-year MSc, which is also pre-registration or fully um, recognised by the nursing. So how does that work in terms well. of, I'm sorry to interrupt mm. you. So if someone has completed a BSc nursing in Nepal and then they meet the entry requirements, yeah. so does that mean um, getting a master's in nursing would uh, mm. allow them no. to register? So basically what happens is the candidates for our MSc programme for adult nursing, the two-year pre-reg programme, are students who are not currently nurses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let's say they've got a bachelor's from Nepal in 
um, health and social care, or they've done something like psychology or public health, public health or sociology, something mm -hmm. like that. But they want to be a nurse. That's right. their career plan. Oh, right. Well, I want to apply for nursing. You Well, the answer is you can. So to, to apply for the MSc, they can only apply if they're not already a nurse. If they are I a nurse see. already, they can't apply. They should be applying for like public health or mm -hmm. a, a general master's. So the, the MSc in adult nursing is for only for students who are not nurses at the moment. Yeah. Um, so the entry requirements is again 55%, but we would expect a bit more for those students to apply. Um, again, it's by UCAS. It's every January. Our next cohort is January 2024. Uh, two years full time, obviously. Um, the IELTS requirements are 6.5, no Bonessna 6. And very crucially, they must have at least 600 hours of experience in the nursing or the healthcare system in their, oh, right. in their home country. Mm -hmm. And there must be a letter from the employer or employers signing off saying they've worked up to 600 hours in total. So maybe they've worked 100 hours here, 200 hours here, 300 mm -hmm. hours here. As long as it totals at least 600, we will have a look at the application and vet it and maybe get the student interviewed as well. And that's what the faculty will do. And that's why, again, they apply through UCAS as well. Oh, okay, right. so okay. the entry requirements are a bit more, a bit stricter, I would mm -hmm, say. Mm -hmm. uh, the faculty can be quite selective. Mm -hmm. And that's why personal statements are very important. Experience really important, particularly for postgraduate applications mm -hmm. for the MSc in adult nursing. But the rewards are incredible. You know, the success rate is around 99% for both programs, mm -hmm. the BSc and the MSc. So that's why I would really encourage students to apply. And that's the ultimate dream to be an, an adult nurse. And they can practice in the UK, they can take it back to Nepal, you know. Uh, these are official programs, you know. Official. So once they finish their masters mm -hmm. in adult nursing, they will yeah. be able to practice nursing? Yes, absolutely, yes, oh, that's wow. right, okay. yes. I think a lucrative um, career in terms of professional growth if you're looking forward to get into hospitals here in the UK and a chess mm. you know um, high demand high shortage of staffs mm. so I think it's it's, sure. it's a place where you can do a couple of years of study and then professionally get into work uh, where as you mentioned 99 percent of students are getting into workforce so I yes, think within absolutely. seven months you know, so yes. I, I think that's that's important to understand so if you're if you have completed your BSc in public health, healthcare management, probably psychology yeah. or any other discipline, but you've worked for more than 600 hours in a healthcare or such kind of settings, you can apply provided that you can meet 6.5, not less than six in IELTS. And uh, once you finish your degree, you'll be fully qualified to be a nurse. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and boost your career. I, th I think that's a, that's a lucrative. I, th I think that's a very good option for Nepalese students. Mm -hmm. I, I see a lot of Nepalese um, are currently working in hospitals, working in healthcare settings. And um, I think especially for those uh, who never had such kind of um, academic qualification to switch after bachelor's degree, I think that's a, that's a very good option. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Okay. That, that was all about BSc and MSc adult nursing. So today we are here at Luton campus briefing about uh, Bedfordshire University. And it's a pleasure again to be with Liam here sharing all the insights about Bedfordshire University. I'll soon be there in Nepal. Um, if you have any questions, you can meet me personally. And um, as Liam mentioned, Bedfordshire as a university is among a very few university which offer six intakes throughout the year, where uh, in the majority of the university, you're likely to see a couple of intakes only. Throughout the year, you have a possibility to get into a university. So um, it's not too late for September yet. We are still accepting applications one thing i'm curious to know is about the delays in offers you know mm. the majority of the student they ask us i mean i've applied for a couple of weeks we haven't got offers yet mm. so why why I think that, this is, that quite, is happening and quite normal this is quite common for all universities don't mm. forget it's not just us many universities in the uk are experiencing lots of delays uh, with applications because we're simply you know, very, very busy. There's huge demand for the UK right now, including us as well. 
Um, you know, we are working very hard to turn around offers quickly and efficiently. Uh, and with people like myself who are supporting our agents like New Ladder, uh, we'll do our best to get them processed. All I would say is, is that if you are applying for an undergraduate course or a programme that's got one or two intakes per year, a master's degree such as MSc Public Health, those applications are going to be prioritised um, simply because of the demand at the moment is so incredibly high. If you're applying for one of our block programmes, for example, MBA, um, then it might be processed uh, later on, which could be even for our November intake this year. Okay, So please bear that in mind. You know, we are very, very busy. We're doing our very best to support our agents and support yourselves with the applications. But bearing in mind at the moment, the demand is still incredibly high, uh, which has been the case um, for the last couple of years as we've recovered from the pandemic. Yeah, um, as Liam mentioned that, the number of uh, applications coming from South Asia and Africa is quite high mm -hmm. in majority of the universities and that's the reason why there has been delays. But again, I would like to assure you, if you're really committed, if you think that Bitford Start University is the final destination, you might have already applied through Uniladder or other agencies. And if you think that this is the final destiny, then please do get in touch with us. We should be able to, I mean, we are in a stage where we can escalate and yeah, probably absolutely. within um, eight to ten days maximum once we get a confirmation that you're sure to apply um, we can push it forward and then yeah. probably get offers yeah, and process absolutely. it quickly i think that's that that's the way how it is currently working yeah. because it is um, almost impossible for a university to look into thousands of applications that they get in and then unless it's prioritized and everyone understands that majority of the students are applying in a couple of universities so unless um, a priority list is given mm -hmm. in some cases you're unlikely uh, to be assessed and i think also it's good to mention here that we we are now expecting applications to be complete so all the key documents must be there so if you really are genuinely interested in studying at the University of Bedfordshire here in the UK we would expect first of all a strong personal statement from you the students you know why are you applying to the University of Bedfordshire where's your research in that statement why are you looking at the UK why are you mm -hmm. applying to the UK why not applying to Australia why not Canada why not the USA what about New Zealand you know um, so why the UK in particular? You know, what's your career plan? And obviously, why have you chosen this course as well? So we need a really good personal statement, at least one solid reference from your employer or your tutor from your school or college, obviously, um, a complete application form which Uniladder will do with you, okay? Um, an IELTS or an English test result, if you've got it, it's not compulsory for the initial application, but we can't proceed with your interview until we have the English test results with us. Obviously your deposit is obviously really important as well. Um, you know, so we are looking for a complete application. You know, all your academic certificates, qualifications, copies all there. It must be there, otherwise we can't really proceed further. So I'd also emphasize that if you really want to come, it must be a complete application. Definitely. I mean, if you need any help in terms of your application process to get in touch with us, because sometimes you may not have a final degree certificate, but still we can process. Sometimes you may not have your English language certificates, but still we can process with your transcript and existing documents. Not necessarily you will need IELTS at the beginning of applications, but throughout the process, once you get a conditional offer letter, we can meet those conditions. As I said, it may take a couple of weeks to get you an offer letter. By then, you, you might be in a position to um, get your IELTS results. Mm -hmm. So in that scenario, it will save time and you can navigate throughout the process and that you know exactly where you will be heading to and it's a good news today i would like to share to our viewers watching this video that we have already received a visa for september intake so we are rolling on and uh, we look forward to um, your support in upcoming days we had uh, hundreds of applications coming in from nepal exclusively for uk universities that's a high level of uh, support that we are getting from students and parents uh, the students who are currently studying in the uk they are referring to us and uh, we are able to help and assist their friends and families which is which is nice and again as i said i will be in nepal soon if you want to talk to me personally about your case 
feel free to get in touch with our team in Hatisar will be able to assist you further. So um, I think we are towards the end of the conversation. We can talk a lot about <laughs> um, the university courses. They are very niche courses, certain courses are high in demand and uh, we can talk a lot, but I think we'll have to wrap it up because of the time frame. you know, um, shouldn't be a too long, but <laughs> too long, otherwise it might be boring in some context. You know? <laughs> so anything that I might have missed, you want to share something to our viewers or anything in particular you'd like to highlight? I think really, you know, it's around, you know, coming to the University of Bedfordshire, you know, just to emphasise those key points, the locations, convenience, close to London, affordable tuition fees, affordable on campus, lovely en suite accommodation, scholarship up to £1,500 with £1,000 guaranteed as well, automatically given to students. Modern facilities, the lovely Luton Library, the STEM building, this fantastic postgraduate centre, you know, um, students can work in Luton and Bedford 20 hours a week, earn some money, uh, jobs going in the local area, that's really important for the students. And we offer a really good range of practical professional programmes with multiple intakes per year, undergraduate um, courses, majority is September and January, and six intakes per year our postgraduate business, computing and engineering courses as well. So yeah, I would really encourage you to research, you know, look at the university, look at our program, speak to Uniladder, and if you want to commit to Bedfordshire, then please make an application. I think that's it for, for today. And thank you, Liam. Thank you so much a pleasure. for thank you, being Ganesh. in our pleasure. YouTube channel and thank sharing you. all, all these details. Thank you. Thank you. Marco Polo Business Hotel, ko, second floor my unilateral consultancy. Obviously, it's so, a different segment of Marco Polo Business Hotel. Uh, second floor ma unilateral consultancy cha edi tapai uk ko lagi bishesh gari one to one counseling garna chahanuncha one to one pura kani garna chahanuncha september intake ko lagi processing garna chahanuncha bhane hami unilateral consultancy marco polo business hotel hathisar ma avasthit chau second floor ma thank you